So I've got this old MCG motor here. Uh, it's a brushless DC motor, eight pole, and I'm gonna drive it without any feedback. So I'm not gonna hook up the encoder and you can see the halls have been uh, removed for some reason by somebody, they just cut off the cable. So I'm just gonna drive this in an open loop manner. Um, so we're gonna count, I've got, about two amps applied to the shaft of this motor. It can handle about 5.1 amps. So we're gonna see how much uh, force we get out of two amps. Uh, it's not very stiff, open loop wise. It gets a little stiffer as I move it a bit one way or the other. Um, so this is not the optimal position for torque. It's probably plus or minus uh, some number of degrees. But if I turn it past its pole pair, I can get to a new pole uh, pole position. And I count uh, three, four distinct uh, positions. Uh, so this has four pole pairs. In other words, current's going to a, a three, of the three wires, current's going into U and splitting down V and W, and that pulls the, the, uh, the coil, uh, the magnet to the uh, to the location of the pole, like a north pole attracts a south pole and a, and, and pushes away from a uh, a north pole, and that, that's how we get into these four electrical positions. Uh, therefore, it's an eight pole motor. It's important to know the electrical cycles. Now we're going to drive this in an open loop way. Um, I found this really cool image of uh, open loop control of a brushless DC motor. Uh, this is some sort of blog post here, but it's a, it's a TI image and it just shows the FETs being switched open loop uh, to, to a, a brushless DC motor with, with magnets on the rotor and, and coils uh, to produce the electromagnetic force and they're doing the trapezoidal waveform here. Uh, now it's it's important to note that this motor is actually designed to be used with halls at least, or encoder for figuring out the commutation. But today we're gonna do it in a pure open loop manner. Um, this is uh, electricalbaba.com. So I, I don't, I think this is by admin. So this, this, this is probably stolen from something and then reshared, but uh, open loop speed control, you know, talks about some limitations, closed loop speed control, you know. Uh, the idea normally, traditionally, is you'll have hall sensors to measure the position of the magnets, and then you can put the current vector 90 degrees to the magnetic vector and get optimal torque. But that's not to say you couldn't drive it in an open loop manner. So uh, we're going to take a quick peek at uh, the motor, uh, the motor data here. Uh, but first, I'll start using CME version 8.1 beta. Uh, this beta 12 has the Argus, that's the first of the plus drives to get this three phase uh, stepper motor feature for open loop or sensorless control of a brushless DC motor. Um, so we have this option for three phase stepper now. We'll add it to the other plus drives in a later version of CME, just after we prove out that it, it functions for customers and it has. So we're, we're using it. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, so we can see that this uh, motor is uh, 0.95 Newton meters at 7.2 amps. I'm gonna show you the the data for this motor. So the continuous stall torque 0.95, and that's at 5.1 amps RMS. I multiply that by the square root of two and I get 7.2, so I use that. Um, I'm gonna actually set it to two amps because I got a 48 volt power supply that's gonna limit my uh, voltage for speed and current. It's probably a three amp power supply, so I don't wanna collapse it. But you can see they, they designed this uh, 
IB34002 motor for 80 volts or 170 volts to get 6,000 RPM. And you can see at 80 volts, they're anticipating a drop off uh, as you deliver torque. Uh, there's, a, there's a cutoff here above 2,000 RPM, but if your currents aren't high, you can extend the speed out a little bit. Um, it, it, it's giving me a torque constant of 11 uh, volts per radians per second or 0.11, same as uh, the, the motor torque constant. I'm, I'm gonna double check that, that number here. Um, so if, if we ever have a motor and we don't have the data, we can figure out how, how fast we expect it to go. So 0.9, five, four newtons, newton meters, divided by 7.2 amps, and that's peak, not RMS. And I get 0.132 newton meters per amp peak. Um, I'm using a, a different drive here to enter this in, uh, and I'm gonna match these numbers because one newton meter per amp peak equals one volt per radian per second peak, not RMS. Um, and then I'll convert to volts per kRPM. I got 13.82. And the question is, how fast do I expect to go? Uh, I got a 48 volt power supply and it's a PWM amplifier. So you get 95% of that minus a couple of volts for IR drop. And you got 43 volts divided by 13.82 uh, and somewhere around 3000 RPM, you'll be voltage limited you'll be bumping your head on the voltage limit. So less than this speed, no problem. When you hit this speed, you get voltage limited, your, your current may start to fold back a little bit. Um, before I show uh, a move, I'm just gonna, I calculated the initial tuning parameters. Uh, I, did the, uh, I did the manual tuning and I tuned for two kilohertz of current loop bandwidth because I'm trying to go as fast as possible. I got uh, eight poles, four electrical cycles, uh, 6,000 RPM would be 100 revs per second times uh, however many full steps this motor has. Let's try to count the full steps. So tools, manual phase, um, I'm gonna give it one amp, and I'm gonna start off with current going into U at the zero angle. I'm gonna rotate it to 90 degrees. So I get no current in U. And then I'm gonna rotate it another 90 degrees till I get minus that current in U. And I'm gonna go another 90 degrees uh, until I get no current in U. And then I'm gonna complete the cycle and have one amp uh, back to U again. So, uh, one electrical cycle has four states. That's uh, this motor has eight poles or four electrical cycles uh, times four states at 16 full steps. So uh, to, to figure out the, the, the full step, we'll just you know do each electrical cycle by four. And then to figure out the degrees per full step, you get 360 degrees for one rev divided by 16 full steps is 22.5 degrees point for, per full step. So that's, how, that's where we came up with this basic step angle and this full steps per rev. Now, rather than just control it in a full step manner, I'm gonna multiply that by 100 and get like 100 micro steps per full step. Uh, this, this could be a thousand, right? It's, it's a relativistic number. It's just micro steps in between the full steps. If you had a 4,000 count per rev encoder, then you could put 4,000 micro steps here or 40,000 micro steps. Um, uh, there is a possibility of doing encoder corrections, but I have to ask you, gosh, if you have a, a stepping motor, a servo motor with an encoder and maybe some halls, like why not just drive it in a servo mode? Um, anyways, uh, this is uh, sensorless. So that's why we're doing this with no feedback because somebody chopped off the feedback or, or whatnot. Um, this, again, is not position control. Um, as you can see, it's not, not very stiff when it's, when it's enabled holding position. Um, but we'll take a look at this. Uh, 
I'm going to enable it now and uh, first things first, we'll take a look at the, the, the tuning uh, of, of the loops in a moment, but my goal is to try to hit 3000 RPM and we'll take a several revs, so 1600 uh, multiplied several times, like 100, 100 revs. Well, that would be 50 revs. Anyways, you can see the profile velocity. This is the trajectory we're commanding in an open loop, right? This is what we want to do. So accelerate, run at a velocity, decelerate. So we're actually hitting 3000 RPM. My bus voltage is around 48. During decel, I get a little regen pumped up. Um, I notice that my actual current is pretty good. It gets a little noisy while it's spinning. Um, there's a little variation over time. So, so the, the current loop is trying to control its commanded and actual. Uh, however, here we're starting to hit a voltage limit. Uh, you can see the voltage limit warning. It's not solid. You're just bumping your head. Um, there's a few things we can do to increase the, the speed capability in the open loop. So maximize smoothness doesn't doesn't do it we may see a more solid uh, voltage limit here yeah as a, a little bit more solid voltage limiting uh, you, you gain a little bit this is the difference between circular and hexagonal limiting where we have a circle inside a hexagon and we gain a little voltage at all the corners um, also the bandwidth is important so a good two kilohertz of current loop bandwidth so I'm going to take a quick peek at the current loop tuning, uh, auto setup checkbox, commanded and actual, hit start. Um, you can see that the, the current loop gains are a little bit high here. Um, if the gain was too high, you get excessive ringing. So I'm just knocking it down. Uh, it doesn't seem too high now. Arguably, you could probably get a little bit more bandwidth out of it. Uh, I'm just trying, yeah, it's too much ringing. So stay away from the, the overshoot there if you can. I'm going to let it go a little bit overshooty, but you can see if the integral is too high, again, you get integral wind up. You see how it's starting to get a little tilty there. Um, I'll give it a little bit more integral, try to not, not to get too much tilt, just so we can try to control that current uh, when we do the, the open loop stuff. So that looks a little flatter. Uh, trajectory 3000. Let's knock off a few revs here. I'm going to run out of time, but uh, this is pretty good. Pretty good uh, current while we're moving. Uh, it's holding pretty tight. Uh, as at some point we if we accelerate too fast, we're not going to have the the force to move the inertia and we'll get uh, lost position. Yeah, so you can see uh, something bad happened here. You totally lost uh, open loop control. So just uh, maybe keep your, your D-cell down and you can control the inertia. I have to go out a little bit further to capture higher speed so as as you go faster and faster it just becomes a little more difficult to control the current uh, you'll start seeing some voltage limit warning miscellaneous warning voltage limited and let's go a little bit further just doubling the distance again so we can run it at 3000 rpm um, if i knock the speed down uh, below that, I can be in a in a in a in a safe range. Um, very curious exactly how fast I could go. Let's see if we can hit some ridiculous speeds here. We'll start seeing the current. Yeah, there's the current folding back. Uh, we're near the danger zone there, so 
at some point we'll start uh, 